Good evening, everybody, and welcome here to Macomb High School as we bring you Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling's presentation of Bomber Football. As the Bombers are taking on the Chargers of Illini West, both teams are getting set up, ready to come onto the field now. It is Macomb's senior night. Just thought I'd mention that. Both teams coming to this game with a record of 1-1. One one. Of course, Macomb lost last week to Knoxville. Score, final score was 48-30. Chargers come into this one off a win against Elmwood Brimfield, 34 to 14. John Burton alongside me, one Mr. Tony Weston, like last week, running it back. Chargers getting, or excuse me, Bombers getting ready to take the field now. We got about five minutes till kickoff. This becomes a huge game this week, John. Uh, off the loss last week, 18 points on the scoreboard, but it was a tale of two halves. It was a, such a competitive football game in the first half last week. Bombers marched the length of the field, took about six, seven minutes off the clock right before halftime, had a couple of chances from the one-yard line and couldn't punch it into the end zone, and it changed the, the, the dynamic of the football game right there. Coming out... Um, Knoxville made a couple of adjustments that that we uh, that we it, it took us a minute to to adjust back to and, and that ends up being the the tail of the game penalties on both sides we talked about um, but but now here we are home field and boy this weather Johnny all of a sudden the heat's gone away we're starting to get some football weather that sun's just starting to dip below the trees this is fall in the Midwest and we're getting ready for bomber football yeah, absolutely. Fantastic night for a football game. And, and as you mentioned, a tale of two halves last week in, in Knoxville. And nothing to hang your head about losing to a team like Knoxville. Of course, they're one of the, the better programs in the area. But yeah, McComb definitely looking to bounce back after that rough loss. Well, I'll tell you what, we talked about it last week. There were a lot of questions that we had going into that game that we you know, couldn't really answer week one. But, uh, but that we saw last week, our line held up against a traditional program power where they're built on their line both sides of the football in Knoxville uh, and our line held up well it gave quarterback time produced a couple of running lanes uh, obviously we lost uh, J. Ron Petty early in that football game after one carry changes the look of our running game but uh, also our linebackers we wondered how they would hold up against that that the discipline and the power of Knoxville. Linebackers were coming up hard. They were attacking the line of scrimmage. They were at the POA, um, and, and they stood firm. So a lot of positives. There's stuff to clean up. I know there's been a, a good, long, hard week of practice that, that Coach Horrell, Coach Wilson, Coach Ladd, and, and the whole staff have worked hard to, to fix some of those things. And, you know, we're going to see that tonight. Uh, a good Illini West football program is, is coming back from what they consider a down year last year. They had playoff aspirations, fell short to Macomb in week nine. And, uh, and, and they're looking to get that taste out of their mouths, whereas Macomb is here looking to get the taste of last week out of their mouths. So this is going to be a good physical football team, two good programs. Let's strap it up, and it's about time to go. And with that, we'll take a quick break here on TSSR Game Time Live. Play a couple, or excuse me, looks like we're actually getting ready for kickoff right about now. We'll keep it here. Again, both teams coming into this one with a record of 1-1. One and one. We'll come looking to get things rolling here early on in the season. Illini West loan loss came against the Farmington Farmers, 39-20. to So we're getting ready to get things underway here in Macomb for Bombers football. Excited to be here, Tony. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, how could you not be? I mean, it's perfect weather. Uh, we got a couple of, uh, of good small, you know, small town rivalry that we were missing for a few years. It's back now. Um, this is football right here, right in front of us. Ian Case is about to tee it up again. That's something that's really developed over these last two weeks is, is Ian Case's kicking game has been strong. Can't wait to see him see him come here. Want to see him get a little air under it, but man, I, I've been impressed with the leg on 81. Yeah, had a couple good w kicks last week against Knoxville. Likewise against LVC in the opening weekend. As K sets the ball down now, getting ready to get this one started. Again, if you're in the live chat, make sure to get in there, leave us a comment. Let us know who you're rooting for. Kick there. Looks like it's going to – might have tailed out of bounds. Nope, that stays in Knoxville. bounds. Now, that's that kick that we talked about week one where 
McComb has been doing that for 10 plus years where instead of trying to kick deep, instead of trying the last couple of years, there was a little more onsides, a little more pooch kicks, but really by design, they're wanting to kick that ball high and have it land oh, right around that 25, right just inside the numbers. That's exactly what it did. Checked up perfectly. And, uh, and now Illini West is starting from about the what? Looks like the 23. Yeah, it looks like basically about right in that 23-yard area. Get our first look at the Bombers' defense here, matching up against the Chargers. Lanai West comes set. First snap of the game. Looks like it's going to be oh, he's play wide action. Open. Wide open down the field. That one pass is caught by number eight, Nick Johnson. Lanai West tackled right around the 40-yard line. That's a, that's a very nice play call, and there's a cornerback from Macomb that bit into that run. They had that split wing, uh, wing to the wide side of the field, and um, and just ran a little loop route out behind uh, with that play action and wide open. Good job by Drew Watson, the safety, to, to kind of play center field there and, and be able to range over and make that tackle so it wasn't a touchdown. Play action on the first play of the game for the Chargers. We'll see what they do here on play number two. Of course, they pick up the first down on that long passing play. They're going to hand this one off inside, run up the middle. Going to pick up basically about six or seven yards, I'd say, there. Going to set up second down for the Chargers. Gain of seven yards. Didn't quite catch a number on the ball carrier there. That was Nick Johnson, number eight. I didn't see uh, who brought in the pass. That was Nick Johnson as well. Oh, well, look at that. Well, that was a little wheel route then. Second and three here. Ball's loose on the ground. Toss play to the back. It. Number 20, Ian Bitzinger. Running to the far sideline. He'll get pushed out of bounds. And it'll be a first down for the Chargers. Starting to roll here early on against McComb. It's another one of those situations. I mean, they had exchange problems. The ball hit the dirt, picked it. Or he's able to make that pitch, and we didn't have anybody on the outside there to the boundary. Yeah, fumbled the snap there initially, but as you mentioned, able to recover nicely. Pick up the first down on that one, and here come the Chargers with a new set of downs. Now they're going, they're going with 20 personnel spread, twins to the field. Now we got jet motion, and it's just a quarterback keeper through the middle. Nice spin move there by Max Kinneman on the Chargers team. He's able to pick up a few yards there. Brought down by the McComb defense. Design QB run there. Yeah, first linebacker missed. He'd stepped up hard, uh, stopped his feet, missed. Quarterback made him miss. Uh, gets about four. Set up second and six for the Chargers offense is... They're basically set up about the 25-yard line to the end zone. And they got trips to the field near us with uh, running back that way. Looking to throw once again. That pass is going to be a little bit high. Might have been partially batted down there by Drake May on the McComb side, but definitely not where you want to put that ball either way, to just a touch high. Ian Case didn't get home, but he was there to uh, affect the, the angle of the throw. Uh, that's a big guy in your face when you're trying to throw that football through him. Yeah, all six, seven of them. As you mentioned, a tough guy to throw the ball over. So we got third and six. We got a full wishbone right here, double tight. Play comes, pitch to the bit. Kept him inside. There we go. Yep. Run to the outside. Might have picked up a couple. Gain of three yards there. So Alina West will be looking at a fourth and three here. They're sitting about the 18-yard line. Going to need three yards for the first down. We'll see if McComb can pick up a stop here and what a huge stop it would be on the first drive of the game. Yeah, this would be a huge – I look for a counter here. They are going to throw it. They're rolling out, rolling out. There's inside passes complete, and that will be the first down. Kinnaman once again gets the pass complete. I believe that's Nick Johnson on the reception. That is. That's Johnson again. 
his second reception of the game gives the Chargers a first down as they are pushing the ball up the field once again. Going to be up at about the 10-yard line. First and goal. That was a little rollout underneath pattern. Uh, he just got in between the cornerback and the linebacker, able to make that that pitch and catch. Handoff oh, comes to number gets twenty. The, the, uh, just the initial pressure, he's just able to wiggle through it. That was Ian Bitzinger, Bitzinger on the carry for the Chargers. Ends up with six. There's a flag on the play. Face mask on the Chargers side, it appears. So that'd be good for McComb. Push them back a little bit further. Oh, they. Excuse me. Must have been on McComb. It yep, point, he just pointed the wrong pointed way. Pointed the wrong way. So half the distance to the goal brings the Chargers up, at, up and out about the two yard line. Again, first down. Handoff to Johnson. Can he push it up and through? And I believe that's going to be a touchdown, and it is. So the Chargers get on the board first here. Nick Johnson, have yourself a drive, two receptions. It picks up the touchdown on the short two-yard run at the end. Looking about just under eight minutes. That touchdown comes at 7.59 to be exact. And the Chargers will... They're going to go for two. Yep. Going to line up for the two-point conversion. Back in the bone, double tight. Kinnaman comes set. Pitch back to Johnson. He's going to look to push it up through. Nice tackle there on the far sideline. Pick up a number on that. That's number 11, Braden Holthouse, the quarterback, making the stop there. And we'll see if he can... Turn that into some offense on the other end. It will be McComb receiving the kickoff after the Charger, Chargers go up six right here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential. With campuses in McComb, the Quad Cities, and online, Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. MDH Sport Medicine Rehab is just not for the athlete. Um, we see a variety of ages, getting them from having pain to no pain to get back to their normal activities and their prior level of function. Back here on TSSR Game Time Live's presentation of Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling Macomb Bomber Football. Bombers down early by six. Nice drive to start the game by the Chargers, but Macomb looked to answer right back. So we're getting set for the kick here. Now this is the Illini West huddle on their kickoffs. This is a tale as old as time. They will fake up to the ball and then spread out. Oh, they got rid of the fake up to the ball with new coaching staff. They just went ahead and spread out. They used to rush the ball and go, huh, <laughs> kind of fake the onside kick. So they got six to the field and four to the boundary. Kick deep here. It looks like it might – no, it's going to stay in bounds. That was going to picked up by Deion Doyle in the backfield. He's got a little room to run. He's going to get up past the 25-yard line. Might have got to the 26. We'll see exactly where they mark him again. I believe that was Dion Doyle. Yeah, that was Dion Doyle, and that ball bounces kind of like what we talked about with ours, but on their side, on their sideline, ball bounces. Looks like it's going out of bounds, but it took a couple of hops on the carpet back towards the field. And Dion was able to pick the ball up and get uh, probably about eight yards, maybe. We'll come, come set for their first drive of the game. So they got ten personnel. We got trips to the field. Oh, here's that little athlete pass. Let's see how our athlete is versus yours. Screenplay from McComb. Holthouse to Watson will be close to a first down. Oh, I think he's going to get it. Yeah, about 11 yards. That's a nice play call. I love it. Uh, that is a little bubble screen 
where basically they just count the numbers, and if it's even or less, they just pop that out to our athlete and say, go, go get yards. Come, come set here for the second play of the game. Whole house will hand off. I believe that's – Nice cut. Yep, nice Connor cut Bishop. there. Bishop on the carry. He'll pick up – About seven. About seven on that one. So he gets the handoff. There's there's a, a D lineman or linebacker actually. What was right in front of him about a yard off. He made a little jump cut to the left to the boundary and was able to pick up about seven yeah, about six yards, it looks like. We'll come come set here rather quickly. Starting to push the pace a little bit. There's gonna be a false start on the Chargers. I think that's a number five Roan Jackson. Pick up the flag there. Now, that, again, we talk about it. That's a hallmark of Tanner Horrell's offense is they will occasionally just look to pull you off sides, pick up yards that way. Yeah, that's what I, I just put it at the top. It looks like Tanner, uh, Coach Horrell's trying to get some tempo going tonight. I love it. Trying to get things going, get things moving, catch them in these rotations. Yeah, absolutely. The Bombers come, come and sit here rather quickly. Don't need to, any need for a huddle. Handoff will come to Bishop in the backfield once again. Another nice cut. Might have picked up two or three there on the carry from Connor Bishop. I like that play call. I like that backside counter against that 3-3 three, three because they've got the shade all the way over to the guard, almost in a straight-up two. They've got one defensive lineman this time. They do have their linebackers behind. But if you can hit that counter and get the, the, the linebackers actually moving to the, to the field, then you've got a lot of room to run. They, they were disciplined that time, though. You've got to give them that. Oh, Second about seven. Whole house under pressure. He's able to stay on his feet. Looks to get rid of it. Oh! Hit Watson right in the numbers. Just couldn't drag it in. We almost saw the first sack of uh, Braden Holdhouse this year. Yeah, but they did a nice job, nice balance, able to recover. Definitely doesn't go down on first contact very often. No, that's a big quarterback, uh, very athletic, um, and keeps his feet, keeps his eyes downfield. Put that ball right on the sideline, just couldn't make the connection. So we got about third and seven here. Drops back to pass once again. Straight back to Case, I love it. Couldn't make the connection on the last play. It's almost the exact same play call right back to the big man. We go ahead and, and get that get that rhythm going between those two. Sports corner first down for the Bombers. As they push up to about the 39-yard line on the pass from Holt House to Case. Case's first reception of the game. Now this is technically trips because you've got the twins out to the field, but you've got the wing on the on the on the twin side creating a trips surface, and the running back is to that side. So this could be a counter coming back in, or it could be a rollout throw, or quarterback call makes the first man miss. Oh, he's going to pick up a couple. Linebackers did a nice job staying disciplined. So on the quarterback keeper run by Holt House, he'll pick up. Looks like basically about a yard. That quarterback keeper is essentially the same effect as the counter. Same surface. Five thirty. Now we to get go. the rollout. Pass out to Dion Doyle. Doyle is so going to be stood up there. Yeah, this will be interesting because he was at or beyond the first down marker with forward progress, and he gets taken back a good two yards. Yep, and they give it to him. Good call. So the pass from for Doyle will go about nine yards there as the Bombers pick up another sports corner first down. That's a false start on us. Pointing the right way that time, at least. <laughs> and it looked like another freeze call, but but one of the linemen just got a little antsy there. And uh, and it wasn't even a full go. It was uh, raised his bottom up. But you get those linemen with those, you know, those those bottoms, you see it bouncing, <laughs> that you don't miss it. It's hard to tell the time there. So we're at 5.03, it looks like, and counting. Yeah. The Clock's moving a little faster this week than it was last week. Absolutely. A high snap once again. We've seen McComb struggle with that. Holes House able to recover. Rolls out to his left. Throws one downfield. Is it caught? It is. it is. Nice reception there from Drew Watson down the field. And, man, it, it seems like, you know, McComb has issues with those high snaps, but Whole House has been able to make a play on that a couple of That one just bounced right up into his belly. We've been very fortunate. That, that, 
that is something that's got, and I know that they're working on it, but that's something that's got to get shored up because it's going to come to bite you at the wrong time. How many did they pick up there, Tony? What do you, um, what do you think? About, that looked like about 20. About 20? That's what we'll put it down for. Comcut sets here in the red zone. Handoff comes up the middle for Bishop, puts his head down, trying to make a little bit of progress, but he'll be brought down near the line of scrimmage. I think he got about a yard where he was moving those feet. A yeah. couple of them. Game about two yards there on the carry from Connor Bishop. We're up second and eight for this Bombers offense as they are ever so close to that end zone and tying up this contest. So here we've got that same look, but now that, that Twins look is out wider. I look for an inside slant from the slot, and here it is. Oh, it was out in front of him just a little bit. That slant to Drew Watson, just out in front of him a little bit. Clock rolls under about four minutes, 357. Bring up a Bombers third down, third and about nine. Man, you had, you had the play call exactly right there. Whole house just put it out a little bit too far in front of Watson. See, and now this time Watson's in a little bit. Take snap once again, and that'll draw. Is that number five on the Chargers side, Roan Jackson? Offside, so McComb will pick up a few penalty yards there. So that takes that. Uh third and eight and makes it a third and three which is a lot more manageable it really opens up your playbook you can have that quarterback keeper you can have that counter you can just go with a straight ahead iso or you could hit any of your quick patterns like a bubble screen to watson here no they go tied in they go play action with your classic 1970s early 80s tight end dump to the big man just the way they drew it up in the in the tight shorts back in the 80s and it was perfect with the touchdown to Ian Case. Whole house to Case connection is a touchdown for the Bombers as they're able to tie this one up at 6 looking to take the lead here on the point after. That that touchdown right there makes me nostalgic, Johnny. That's football back when back when I played and when Dad coached. That that just perfect play action tight end dump. Nothing. There's nothing better. It's it's that's just such. That there should be a statue of it. Bombers look for two here. Holt House throws to the end zone. It's caught by Doyle, and the two point conversion is good. Bombers take the lead, eight to six. Touchdown comes at about three. 53, it looks like. They, man, Tony, they put that pole right in the wrong spot yeah, when really you're in did. this press box to see the <laughs> clock. Nonetheless, Bombers go up to right here on TSSR Game Time Live. We'll take a quick break and be right back with you for some more Bombers football. MTC Communications is building a high-speed fiber network in our community, and we're putting priority on the areas with the greatest interest. That means we need your input to let us know you want us to build fiber in your area first. Experience the speed and convenience of fiber internet by visiting our special website and registering. Let us know you want fiber internet today and make your voice heard. Back here on TSSR Game Time Live's presentation of Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling's Bombers Football. We got Lisa Findham in the chat saying, let's go, Bombers. Glad to have you alongside with us. Now, we need a huge kickoff here from Ian Case, and this is an important defensive series. You don't want this to be a back-and-forth affair. You want a defensive stop right here, give the offense the ball back, and, and really a, assert your dominance and say, no, this is our field. This is our night. Isaiah Knott on the return on the Chargers' side. Was able to bring it back a little bit. Gets out to about the 37. So the defense, football's at the minus 37 here. You're in good shape. Just got You understand now that this is not the Illini West team that, that you've played over and over again. They're going to spread it out. There's going to be some play action. They're going to throw the ball more than you've seen. But they still have that big, powerful downhill running game. So you just got to play assignment football. You got to stay in your lane. Outside guys got to stay outside. You can't be swept in. But let's get this stop right here on this drive. The lining up in the double tight bone. 
Line A West will kick off the second drive here tonight. It'll be a run play up the middle. Met by a few bombers. Start to pile up there. We'll see maybe about a yard or two on that one. Not very much. Good defense there for McComb on the inside run. Looks like he ends up getting about three. Yeah, gets three yards. And what happens is he's four. Yeah, about four. He, he, he's met at the line, but a combination of keeping his feet chucking hard and those linemen getting in and giving their guy a ride, we've got to get more guys in in our in there for us and get violent in there and push that pile back. That that pile moved four yards. Double tight wing again. Chargers, another run. Ball might have been that a little loose there. That's stuffed in the backfield. And that's I was just getting ready to say number twenty is up. He's the up back in that wing. Eventually all of the deception, they're going to go ahead and give it to him for, for a quick hit into the line and hope that, that that initial pressure has fallen asleep on him because they don't give him the ball much. They give him the ball, and he's met in the backfield and swarmed. Chargers will lose about two yards on that play. Brings up third and eight. So third and long, trips to the field. Chargers come set. Yeah, roll out, roll out. Came in looking to throw. Has a man on the far sideline. Picked! Interception there by McComb. That's an, e that's an easy way to get a turnover, Mr. Tony. Connor Bishop, the senior on senior night, secures the football, cuts the route. That was a nice play. They rolled out. They had trips to the field. He just tries to get the easy pitch and catch like before. Connor Bishop read it, undercut it, and got the football. And now it's bomber ball and plus territory at the 44. Yeah, Bishop read that one all the way. McComb will look to take over here at about the 45. Whole house back, drops back to throw once again. Has a man deep downfield. That's Doyle. Is it Kyle? No! You know, flag on the play, though. Comes out right around on where a deal or Deion Doyle was trying to make that reception. Could be a pass interference. Could be a defensive hold. Maybe he had to hold a jersey, but I think at this level they just call that uh, pass interference. Let's talk it over. We'll see what the call is. It'll be charged to the Chargers. Pass interference was the call indeed. So that'd be a 15-yard penalty on the Chargers. Dion had inside leverage. That looked like it was going to be a big play, and if he could, and if the big man could shake that defensive back, he was going to the house. Timeout here. Yep. Timeout charge to the McComb side. We'll keep it right here for this one. Get through a couple of the live reads here. Looked like uh, Coach Horrell wanted a different personnel group out there, and there was a miscommunication, and somebody was still on the sideline. So went ahead and called the timeout in order to get his, get his personnel group on the field. With locations in Macomb and Augusta, and with 80 years of car sales experience, Ron LB Auto Sales is your hometown go-to for your next car. In Macomb on East Jackson Street, stop and talk to Justin, Jared, or Chris, or visit www.lbsalescars.com to check out their inventory. Just one of our many fine sponsors here on TSSR Game Time Live. We got Todd Moon in the chat saying Coach Weston is getting excited. Great night for Bombers football. <laughs> Absolutely. Todd, you know that I'm always excited, buddy. <laughs> I wake up excited. Hey, we haven't uh, we haven't seen much of Ian Case since that Tom Coughlin touchdown. So uh, I'm looking for him. So that's this is run right here. Oh, oh we stopped our feet. We got to go. We got to go. Bishop makes a man miss in the backfield. Might have picked up a yard or two there. I think he got back to the line and was was happy to do it. <laughs> yep, definitely was met in the backfield there. You're going to give him um, maybe about half a yard on the carry for Bishop. So we got we got dubs. We got twins on both sides. That's the first time we've seen this ace look. Running back. Along the left side, the, the near side of Holdhouse, is Bishop. Holdhouse drops back to pass. Has a man downfield. I oh. believe that pass is going to be broken up. 
Number 13 there, Lucas Finch on the Chargers side, able to pop that one free. So that ball was thrown to Jack Beal. It was thrown in between a cornerback and a safety, and it was there, and Jack Beal had his hands on it, but but those defensive backs, I mean, it was, it was a small area to fit it into, and Jack got hit from both sides as the ball got there, and his, his hands were extended. So uh, they were able to lodge that ball back. That was a nice defensive play. So you got third and long now. Minute 30 remaining here in quarter number one. Whole house passes again. Has Deion Doyle on the far sideline. He's going to pick up the sports corner first down. That's a sports corner first down into the Diggers College City Bowl red zone. We are knocking at the door once again. That's a huge pickup, and I love it. That was half of the distance you needed of the line to gain. And Deion Doyle hits a hitch, but everything's to the other side of the field. They isolated him in the cornerback. They're asking that cornerback to make a play on that six foot five receiver. He catches the ball and he just wouldn't be denied getting to the pylon or quick, to the stick. Sorry. Quick screen out for Watson. He's going to break one tackle, stays on his feet. He's going to be dragged out of bounds. Nice pickup there by Watson. I'll tell you what, that's a nice form tackle there. The second tackle by Bradley Miller, number 44 linebacker for the Chargers. Uh, he just came in, kept his feet, kept everything, and didn't allow any of the wiggle that, that Drew Watson possesses to, to affect him and just put his hat right in the middle and, and wrapped up. It's a nice tackle. Pass will go for about six yards. Six yards picked up there by McComb. Sets up second and four. Trips to the field. But you got the big man here on the boundary. Keep an eye on that. Oh, it's going to be a quarterback keeper. Make one man miss. Oh, he hits his own lineman. Oh, geez. So he made the first guy miss. Another linebacker's on him. But we've seen Braden Holdhouse shed people before. But he had a crossing blocker that he ran right into, which gave the linebacker time to adjust his grip and and, and stick with him. Still a nice, what did you say, about five-yard gain? They're, they're going to mark him down just inside the first down marker. I, I thought he got up. Got up to about the five-yard line. Yep. Which he did. So, yeah, about five or four, four to five yards there. Third and inches here. McComb knocking on the door once again, looking to go up one touchdown against the Chargers. 29 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Clock is stopped. Oh, it looks like we got a measurement. Yep. I would say so. That one was definitely close enough. I mean, they had to have been close. I'd be surprised if they didn't give it to them. Getting that ball basically right in between the six and the five-yard line. Chain gang will come out. And we'll see if McComb will pick up the first down. Hard to tell from this angle. Looks pretty close. Looks like it's I would good. I would say they got it. Oh, no. Now they're pulling. Uh, uh, that's going to be a little tougher. Inches. Two to three inches. So to remain third down for this Bombers offense, again, not far to go for the first. Once again, knocking on the door of the end zone. I'd love to see Braden Holdhouse step up to under center and just nose down forward. Holdhouse. Design QB run, trying to get to the outside, trying to break a tackle. Oh, he, he does, does. One. and he, he gets to the pylon for the touchdown. Tom Conklin, touchdown. He was stopped at the line, and boy, I was about to say, I thought he could have cut up just to get that couple inches for the first down, and he started to widen out around that, that outside linebacker that had stepped up, and he had him. He had him down, and it probably might have been short, but he sheds that linebacker, and it's a race to the pylon with the cornerback, and he wins it for the Tom Conklin touchdown. Great start here for McComb tonight. Touchdown comes at about 12 seconds to go in the first quarter of action. Setting up the two-point attempt here. So this is a tight ace. Motion out. 
Whole house will oh, scramble to his right. There. Had a man wide open. Looked like Watson there. No, that was uh, uh, Jack Beal was on the motion from the wing on the near side of the field, went on the jet motion across the formation, and then just ran a little shallow out and was wide open. So the Bombers pick up the touchdown. They'll go up 14-6 to right here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. Since 1960, Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling has provided the Greater Macomb area with expert sales, service, and installation of quality home comfort systems. Call your local carrier dealer today at 309-833-2852 and find out how Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling delivers 365 days of indoor comfort. The Old Dairy, located at 210 South Lafayette Street, Macomb, serving soup, salads, sandwiches, homemade desserts, Blue Bunny ice cream, and a full-service coffee bar. Breakfast served all day and free Wi-Fi. Visit them online at www.olddairymacomb.com. Call 309-837-6700 for your takeout. Once again, we've got quite a few people here in the chat joining us on this great night for football. If you're watching, make sure to get into that live chat. Leave us a little comment. Going to be just under 12 seconds at the time of this kick. Remaining in the first quarter. While we're waiting for Ian to put his foot into it, we'll talk about Thursday night specials at Diggers College City Bowl from 4 to 6 p.m. before the leagues. That's $5 per person. Uh, includes your shoe rental. So a couple of hours of bowling there for 5 bucks. I don't know that you can beat that deal. That one goes out of bounds. Yeah, kick goes out of bounds. Looks like it, it might have crossed the 40, 38, somewhere in that region before heading out. Just in case I have a couple good kicks here tonight, that one, not quite the same as the others. And my wife just texts me a laundry on the field. That's her favorite thing to hear on the on the <laughs> on the broadcast. That she's a fan of the old cliches. That that is definitely a good one. Seeing seeing a couple penalties here tonight. Face mask, two false starts, and a pass interference on the Chargers side. So far, McComb able to play pretty clean. Only the one false start on them, and then, of course, the penalty we just saw right there. So the Chargers will take over about the 49. We'll see one play. Double tight bone. Before the second quarter starts. And that's the up back again. Oh, he's powering forward, keeping his feet moving. Boy, he was met at the line, and he's going to pick up a solid six, if not seven. Yeah, again, it was met at the line, but able to keep the feet chugging there. That's number 20 on the Chargers' side, Ian Bentzinger. He's got a couple nice carries here tonight, and that's how the first quarter of play will come to an end. Bombers up 14-6. to We'll be right back with you on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH. I chose physical therapy because I knew I wanted to be in the healthcare field. Um, I wanted to be able to help patients in some way re uh, related to uh, more in depth. We get to know our patients and that's really uh, what kind of sets us apart. Right back here on TSSR Game Time Live's presentation of Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling's Bombers football. Bombers have the lead here. Eight point lead for the Bombers as they'll go. Chargers will come set here after the field flips over. Be a play action pass. Pass is caught by oh, Benzinger. Nice catch. Yeah, nice catch there. Big athletic play by Benzinger on the far sideline. He'll pick up the first down for the Chargers. Gets the chains moving there. Yeah, that was a tough play there. 
as uh, as uh, Kinnaman had two guys in his face, two tall guys with arms in the air. He's got to get his arm angle around those guys. Had to put it above number 20. Uh, and he goes up and makes an athletic catch and keeps his feet moving to gain yards. Nice play. So the Chargers set up here about the 35 to the goal. Come set once again. Be a pitch play to the outside. That is Johnson on the carry. He's had himself a productive night. Makes a man miss. Breaks another tackle there. He runs to the near sideline and is eventually taken out of bounds by Ian Case. Boy, that was a, a just a nice, patient run. Nice, patient run where he was met at the line of scrimmage. It ends up picking up 11 because he just would stop and survey the field and wait for a blocker, wait for somebody to run by him, made a guy miss, and turns nothing into 11 yards. Nice run by the young man. Yeah, Johnson has definitely had himself a night. He had the big reception on the first play of the game. He was able to punch in the Chargers' lone touchdown to this point. Looking to continue on here. He's in the slot right now, I believe. I'd keep my eye on that. Oh, no, they go with the give. They'll hand it right up the middle. That is Benzinger once again on the carry, put his head down. Yeah, and they're starting to, hey, they're starting to pierce that middle. They're starting to get confident on going straight downhill. McComb did a great job last week against a tough Knoxville team, slowing down that inside run. It was the, the outside runs that eventually killed them in the second half. But, yeah, as you mentioned, Chargers doing a nice job, nice pickup there by Benzinger through the middle. Let's see where Johnson lines up here. Now he's in the backfield, it looks like. Oh, they're going double tight wishbone again. That's the up back. Yeah, hand off to Benzinger once again. We'll be a Chargers first down as he pushes this one up to about the nine or eight. Yeah, Ian Benzinger is a big boy. He's a senior. That goes about six foot two oh five. Big young man, strong young man. He's just getting confident going straight downhill. We need to attack those legs. We're getting up a little bit around the shoulders. We need to get low and, and stop that momentum. Yeah, nothing fancy about that. Just putting your head down and moving forward. Chargers will come set once again. Engine closer to the end zone. Bombers need a big stop here. They That's hand it off to Benzinger once again. He dives, tries to get the ball across, not quite. Be about one yard. Nice, another nice pickup there. And again, they just keep going right back to it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. No, yeah. and that's uh, and that's as you're saying. There's no scheme here. There's no. There, there, you can't make an adjustment to this. This is straight up. We're coming right up the gut. Are, are you tough enough to to stop the blocks? And, and right now we've got to we've got to hold that line of scrimmage. We've got to make the running back stop his feet at the point of attack. Hand off to Ben Sarah once again. That better job there. You're able to heck, connect with him in the backfield. Might have picked up half a yard or so, but Combs' defense stands tall so far. Nice tackle there by Jeffrey Lee on the McComb side, able to stop Benzinger. We're going to need two more of those. Yep, second and goal for the Chargers. Need Third and goal, excuse me. At least that's what they have up there. I thought it was second. Yeah, that way. Yeah. Either way, Chargers come set, knocking on the door. And there's the – to the second back. So that's the – that's the fake to the dive, and then they go to the second back, who was Isaiah Knotts, who sneaks in on the back, off the back, inside the backside tackle for a touchdown. Yep, went a different direction with that run play to Knotts. Is able to punch it in? Brings the Chargers closer. They now trail by two, 14 to 12. Touchdown comes at about eight, eight oh two in the second quarter. McComb looking to retain the lead. Put a stop here to this two-point conversion attempt. Run will come to the outside for number nice 15. Nice stop. 
Jorge Espinoza, who's met in the backfield. Nice tackle there by... The senior, Connor Bishop, gets through into the backfield and trips him up. And what did we talk about? Where did he go? Straight down to the legs, tripped his legs out, nowhere for him to go. So that was Espinoza's first carry on the Chargers' side. Once again, looking to complete that two-point two conversion. Couldn't quite get it. Taking doing a, a nice job there, picking up the flag football game by the concession stand. Or excuse me, maybe two-hand touch over there. Not quite sure what's going on. I'm trying to get some different shots for you here tonight. So anyway, nice tackle there by Bishop. Able to retain the Macomb lead 14-12. to Once again, that touchdown came at just over eight minutes in the second quarter. And I'll tell you, in the pregame, Tegan had the call. He said it's going to be a dogfight tonight. Said it's going to be close, a couple points either way. And so far he's right. Now we got to see where the depth of those rosters comes into play when we start to get some fatigue, when we go into the into the halftime and make some adjustments. Who's going to make those adjustments? Um, we're, we're going to see where those things get separated. But before all that happens, we're getting the ball back right now, and it's time to answer that touchdown with one of our own, a, a nice Macomb drive. And, uh, and get that, that lead stretched back out. Get it back up to 10. Yeah, yeah. if you could take a, some time off the clock here, punch one in, and, and then McComb will get the kickoff to start the second half, that could be huge. Because like you said, at the rate this game is going, it might come down to whichever team has, has the more. ball last. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, this, this is actually seeming eerily familiar. Last week at this point, it was 14-14, right about the same as uh, probably about a minute less on the clock, and McComb held that football and then just couldn't punch it in right at the end. So this week, we want to we wanna do everything the same except punch it in. Here comes the kick on the Chargers' side. Nice kick there. Ball's going to be picked up right around the 20. I believe that's Doyle on the return once again. Makes a man miss. Looking to push forward a little bit. Brings it up to about the 30 before being brought down. Not bad field position for the Bombers to start off this drive. And once again, if you're McComb, look to take as much time as you can off the clock and hopefully get one punched in, as Mr. Weston mentioned. Last week, did just that, but not quite able to convert at the end. And their, uh, their kickoff philosophy seems to be familiar or similar, they're, uh, they're trying to put the ball on the ground, get a couple bounces to try and limit the, the return yardage. There's the motion to Watson. He gets it on the jet, comes around the edge, room to run. He's cutting back inside across the field, goes through the safety to about the 48-yard line. Watson will pick up the sports corner first down for the Bombers as they get this drive rolling. Nice play there from Watson. Was able to make a few men missed. Was able to run through the last guy, pick up a few extra yards there. 17 yards on the jet sweep, which actually not a traditional jet sweep. And that one's now the fake jet sweep down the field to Deion Doyle. Catches the he ball, and he's into the end zone for the uh, Tom Coughlin touchdown. Huge pass play for McComb. Holthouse to Doyle for the touchdown. And I tell you what, there's good coverage on that play. He's got a cornerback in his pocket. The difference is Dion 6'5". And that ball was up high. It was perfectly thrown. He's able to get the ball up high and just accelerate into the end zone for the Tom Conklin touchdown. And we said McComb might want to take a little bit of time off the clock here, but when you can get into the end zone We're gonna like that, you're absolutely <laughs> going to take it. Come up 20 to 12 now, looking for the two point jump pass there to the end zone for cases. Good two point conversion down for McComb. You know, I love it. You know, I love it. Takes the snap, presents it as though it's a run, pops it up, and just it, it was almost like uh, the basketball player to the basketball player. He almost, he almost did a free throw to him. Yeah, just put it up right where case could get it and no one else could. So the Bombers take a 10 point lead. Right we've, here. we've seen Ian Case uh, pull down those boards before, and that's what it looked like he was doing. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when you got a kid that's that big, you just you put it up there for him, and he'll come down with it, that's for sure. Now, that's enough basketball talk out of me. <laughs> we got wrestling season coming up here <laughs> in, in a couple months. 
So that touchdown came, I would say, right around the 7.30 mark here in the second quarter. Comb will look to kick off once again. Now, how about a stop? How about a huge defensive stop? Get that ball back. Punch one more in before half. Then you've really got something going into halftime. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of time still left on the clock after the quick two-play drive by the Bombers. And as you mentioned, if they can get the ball back here, score one more, we we were hoping that they would get one. Now the Bombers could potentially be looking at two. Nice deep kick there from Case. Received it about the 15-yard line. Brings it up. Swallowed up. Nice tackle there. I believe that was. I got the screen in front of me. I can't see it. Number 33, Brennan Bolte on the tackle. Did we have number five, Damone Johnson, in there on that tackle? I think I think that's what they said. A couple couple guys in there. Another senior, and that's this is Damone's first year coming out playing football. It's great to see him out here playing, getting after it, and on senior night getting a big tackle on a special teams play that gets the Chargers. Their drive starts at the 19. Yeah, not the best field positioning here on this drive to start for Illini West. And Clark says about 7.20 Excuse me. for the halftime break. Smart. Smart out of Illini West. They're, uh, they're going with that split wing, uh, but they're not really trying to, to get it there. It, it just full back right up the middle. Much better played by the Bombers, but they're not going to try and get in a hurry. They're not going to try and get cute. They're going to run their offense. Benzinger will pick up. See where they mark it down. They punt. They have that all the way out, about five yard gain there. I didn't oh think he my, got that no, much. No, I didn't see that at all. Maybe about four. Boy, I thought that was a two yard gain all day. Yeah, I didn't. I'm right there with you. Didn't think it was that much, but it is what it is. It'd be a pick of about four. So it's up second and second and six. six. Now here's the the bone, the double tight bone. Second guy on the counter. That's Johnson once again on the carry. He's able to run up the middle. Picks up a few more. Looks like you're going to have about third and long two, short three. Nope, third and two. Third down and two. Clock rolls to just over six minutes. And again, if you're in line I West, you know, want to take us some time off the clock here. This is going to go to the up back. Yep, he hands it off right to him up the middle. We got Benzinger on the carry once again. McComb did a, a good job stopping him, but I think he's going to pick up the first down. And he does. Yeah, that initial contact, and, and they're doing better getting to it, but they're not. They're, there's just not a stonewall action. You know, you got to stop those feet and let your guys get to it, and bring them back a little bit. Again, easier said than done. That's a big, strong young man coming downhill. But those are the things we got to do in order to 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 get that TOD and get the ball back in our hands. Line of West comes set here once again. Now we're spreading out. A little bit of a different formation. They've got formation. twins to the right. They've got a 20 personnel, though, back on either side of the quarterback. Jet motion across, and they go against the jet motion to an option. Pitch to the back, man. Stopped after a gain of about nine. That was number 20 once again. That name's familiar. Ian Bensinger on the carry. Picked up about nine or eight. Give him about nine on that. Yeah, they go speed option. Uh, flat along the line of scrimmage off of that jet motion that was coming to the field or coming to the towards the boundary. So now they're bringing twins to us and they're going split backs again. 440 remaining here before the halftime intermission. Is Johnson in the slot? No. First run, down. Run up the middle. He's going to pick up the first down, only a gain of about one. That was the quarterback keeper up the middle, Max Kinnaman. 
Pick us up about two and the Chargers first down. Four minutes, ten seconds to go here in quarter number two. Line at West comes set once again. Back to the bone, double tight bone. They'll hand it off to Johnson in the backfield. He's able to push that one up. Picks up about five on that carry. Tackle by Drake May on the McComb side. We down under four now? Yep. Absolutely. 345. Again, the Chargers taking a lot of time off the clock here. Can't let that clock get too low, however. Still got three timeouts in the pocket. Back to the wishbone once again. Handoff comes. Oh, nicely the read. Nice tackle there. So that's the counter. That's the counter. They, they were running that same same off tackle play off of the lead, but they, they, they held it in the backhand and gave it on a counter to the backside going towards the boundary, and there were three bombers waiting. That's a loss of two, I think. I believe that was Taylor Cuisenberry on the tackle for McComb. Yeah, absolutely. Able to get to him there. Yep, loss of about two yards. Sets up third, and I call it eight. Now, this is what we talked about last week. A team like this, now they're out of their comfort zone because because the plan, they've gotten back. They're not behind the sticks, but they, they, they're out of their rhythm. So now they got trips to the field, 10 personnel. Look to the rollout coming to us. Two no, he drops straight go. back. Quarterback in his face. It's up in the air and it's oh, it Almost hits the ground. Intercepted. Hits the ground, but it's now fourth and seven in minus territory at about the minus forty-four. Do you go for it? No, they're bringing on the punt unit. Yep, Chargers will look to punt this one away. Two twenty-five. Clock rolls. McComb will have a little bit of time here to make something happen. That was the freshman, Kyler Norton, made a nice play on the ball, getting himself in great position, but I think he had designs on pick six and uh, just couldn't secure it. Yeah, couldn't bring that one in. As the Chargers will look to punt this one away. Huge stop for the Bombers. It's a oh, fake bad. punt, actually. And they stop it! Yep, that's going to be a turnover on downs. McComb will take over. That was a direct snap to the up back inside the wedge. Comes down, gets about a yard before he's swallowed up. They didn't buy it. That's a great play by the Bombers. They get the ball in plus territory at the 46, looking to score before half and keep the ball coming out of half. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know about, I don't know about that call there on the fake punt. You know, a direct snap there. Bombers did a nice job covering. It would have been great if it worked, but trips I, to us. I feel like that one, you just got to get down the field, go take over a great field position. Whole house, quick screen play out to Watson. He's got one man beat, breaks in that tackle, keeps the feet moving a little bit, but you'll pick up about nine on the pass play from Whole House to Watson. Again, that's that little – that wasn't necessarily a true bubble. That was more of a now route. And what I mean by that is on the bubble, you get the receiver's feet coming backwards to meet it and then get – a little downhole steam. This one was just catch it and throw it and release it, and the, and your running back, or I'm sorry, your receiver is running flat to the to the line, and he's trying to catch that ball and just head out. It's it's a quicker hit. They call that a now route versus the bubble that has a little bit of an arc to it. Clock rolls about 1:45 to go. Holton Holthouse runs to the outside towards the far sideline. He's going to be brought down, but not after picking up the sports corner first down. Sports corner first down stops the clock. So now we can get set at the line of scrimmage, wait for the whistle, and run with it. So that's huge. Didn't have to get out of bounds because of the clock stoppage, and it wasn't such a long play that you can't get to set at the line. Trips to us, same formation, 10 personnel, back to the boundary. Minute 20 to go. McComb knocking on the door. Whole house, deep pass once again. Ball oh downfield. Oh it's going to be picked off. No, no, the just ground. knocked down. Had it in his hands for a second. And you know what? We had eyes downfield, and we had the under route, the little wheel, wide open underneath. McComb takes a shot there, not able to bring that one in. Clock will stop, however. 
So Macomb will come set once again, second and ten. So this time they got twins out, and they got, they're got they loaded to this side with the jet. That's going to the jet. To Dion Doyle, cuts it in. Oh, he's now trying to get it back out. Oh, they, they spilled that out very well. That was well read and well executed by the Chargers. They spilled that out so that all Dion Doyle could do was run horizontally. He ends up picking up a couple out of it, which is nice, but, but just couldn't get vertical up the field. That was Jorge Espinoza on the tackle, able to bring the big man down. McComb will take a timeout. They have one remaining here before halftime. We'll take a quick break as well. You're listening to TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. I would have to say that is the most rewarding part of what I do, making a difference in people's lives, taking care of uh, um, the women from puberty on through postmenopausal stages and seeing them go through the phases and stages of life. Right back here at Macomb High School as the Bombers are looking to punch one in before the halftime. Once again, they will receive the kick to start the second half. Bombers are set up about the 25 to the goal. So we got twins to the field. We got a we got an R to the boundary. Running backs to the field, and we got a wing on the near side, which gives us that du those dubs look. Holt House scrambles to his left, has a man downfield. That pass is caught. Get out. Uh, can't quite get out of bounds. But he gets the first down, so that's going to stop the clock. Clock will stop temporarily. Pass goes to Jack Beal on the McComb side. I believe that is his first reception of the game. We're going trips to the field. Clock rolls under 40 seconds. Whole house scrambles to the right this time. Has a man downfield, not quite able to bring it in. I believe that's Doyle once again in the end zone. And again, that's another situation there where I, I feel like we threw that into danger. There was two defenders there in front of Dion, and it looked like uh, Mr. Holhouse had plenty of room to run and probably get out of bounds maybe up around the 10, if not turn it up. And, uh, and get himself into pay dirt. But, but probably with the defenders and with the clock situation, he's probably looking to get out around the 10-yard line. But, you know, easier said from up here in the booth than, than out on the, on the field of battle. Yeah, absolutely. Again, McComb has one timeout. Clock reads 34.3, it looks like. Whole house. Same thing again. Scrambles to uh, White once again. Oh, Doyle he into the field, catches but he's this into one. the end zone for the touchdown. Huge touchdown for McComb as they're able to punch that one in. Holt House to Doyle on the reception. Couldn't quite get it to him. The the play before went right back to him. Was able to ring that one in and pick up six for the Bombers. Yeah, and that's a great play design. It was almost an invert of the play before where instead of Dion going into the post, he actually makes the post move and then settles on that hitch, gets the ball in his hands. And, and I was a little worried when he turned into the field to where all the defenders were, but he ends up splitting the safety in the corner and being able to sneak into the orange area for the touchdown. Whole house on the keeper here for the two-point conversion. He'll push that one up and in. So the Bombers will go up to 30, 30 to 12. Bombers take the lead. Right before halftime, that touchdown and two-point conversion comes at about 27 seconds to go. So now I just let Ian Case get his foot into it, pin him back, drop your safeties a little bit, uh, 24 seconds, and then a few seconds tick off on the kickoff. You know, they've got 20, 22 seconds to go. You know, hopefully if, if, you, do, if, if you get that ball deep, they're looking to go somewhere between 70 and 80 yards. That's a tough task. Then you're starting to look for, for misdirection things, double passes, um, things of that nature, throwing down the field, which even though they showed a little bit of it early, we haven't seen it much since. So let's be aware of, of trick plays. Or like Knoxville last week, are they just going to be content? Let's not, try and, let's not try and push our luck and put the ball back in McCombs' hands and let them score again before half. Maybe we just take a knee, regroup, and, and, and come back down 18. 
So Case and the Bombers look to kick one here. Again, just under 30 seconds before halftime. Nice kick there deep to Splits the middle. Splits him and then cuts underneath. That's a member's bounce for McComb. And that's taking time off the clock, too. That was beautiful. Nice tackle there. Brings the man down at about the 15-yard line. Again, pins the Chargers all the way back. Not much time to work the way upfield here before halftime. Yeah, that, that was best of, of every world you can imagine. They've now got 85 yards to go and 22 seconds to do it in. Yeah, great kick there from Case. And we'll see what the Chargers opt to do here. Again, three timeouts, so they got they got a little bit of room to work with, but so so one line of thinking is you go three down linemen, you you bring a three man surface, you drop eight, and make them use the whole field. But on the other hand, you might be thinking put pressure in the young man's face and make him make a mistake. But they are going to go ahead and take the knee and, and go into halftime. So the clock will expire here in the first half. Bombers again able to pick up that big score. About 20 seconds to go. They are up 30 to 12 over the Chargers. Chargers came off to an early lead to start this one. Up six thanks to the Nick Johnson touchdown run. But the Bombers able to answer right back. Pick up a couple. And we will head into the halftime break. With a humongous 18-point lead for the Bombers. They've owned the Diggers College City Bowl red zone tonight. Scoring early and often, and uh, went, like we said, it went from a, from a two-point game to an 18-point game in a hurry. Chewed up enough of the clock, plus the great Ian Case kickoff that, that really took the decision out of Illini West's hands. All of a sudden, an 18-point lead. We get the ball back. Things are really looking good for the Bombers at this point. Yeah, again, the Bombers able to score two touchdowns and two two-point conversions there in the span of about eight minutes. Able to set them up big heading into halftime. And you know what? Alina West, there's things for them to feel good about. Obviously, the runs of of, uh, of Johnson and Benzinger. What is it? Um, Benzinger. Benzinger, yeah. Number I, just, 20, I, I didn't want man. to mess that up. The big man. I didn't want to mess his name up. I wanted to respect the young man. But, uh, you know, they had a couple of throws early. But they went ahead and went with that downhill run, in which they should. I mean, that that's what they do. They've done it well. They did it well tonight, but the Bombers made a couple of stops, which were humongous. Um, Benzinger's got a bunch of yards. Johnson's got a bunch of yards tonight. But uh, in the end, uh, Holt House has been throwing the ball well, putting it on his receivers. Um, we've ran the ball a little bit when we've had to. But uh, other than that, it, it's just been – a great offensive performance for the for the for the Bombers, and we've gotten a couple stops when we've needed them. Yeah, absolutely. So again, it'll be the Bombers going into the halftime break with the 18 point lead over the Chargers. We got a quick halftime interview teed up for you here, and we'll be right back with you before the start of the second half, right here on TSSR Game Time Live's presentation of Are the Brothers Heating and Cooling Bombers Football. I enjoy working at MDH because it's a smaller hospital. It's just a great environment to be in. These people are amazing and my boss is amazing. We just, we help each other out. It makes the working environment more enjoyable compared to other places I've worked at. It's not just like the people that I work with, but everyone um, in this hospital, they're all very friendly, very kind, very receptive to outsiders and new people. You know, work is not just about the job, it's also about the people that work alongside you. And we have the best teamwork. They're like a second family. And sometimes you can't get that feeling other places. I believe our, our departments here are very cohesive because we are a relatively small community. So not only do we know each other through our professional um, roles at McDonough District Hospital, but we very much see each other in the community as well. And so I think we have a strong um, respect for one another, our diversity and backgrounds, but yet all coming together uh, for one common goal and that's strong patient care. Working in the emergency room is different from any other part of the hospital because I do a lot of hands-on patient care um, in a very high-paced, high-energy setting. We see anywhere from a stubbed toe all the way to 
really intense patients like cardiac arrest, so it's a huge learning environment. We never see the same thing twice, even if they come in with the same complaint. There's always an opportunity to learn, even with your step-toe patients. In the emergency department, if you want to really put your use your nursing skills and your critical thinking at work. ER is definitely for a new grad. Um, working here just for the past couple months as an actual nurse, I've used a lot of my nursing skills I've learned in nursing school and I've used a lot of my critical thinking skills. It just makes me, it makes me feel good about myself being able to help people that need help that need to be taken care of. You get the opportunity to see so many different things that if you worked at a bigger hospital you may not be able to see so that's probably what I think is most unique. We have a lot of travelers that come here and they're like oh my gosh you guys get to do that or wow you get to see that and I'm just used to the you know level four and five and the more what we would classify as the more simpler patients not the more complex and in-depth patients so I think that's what's the most interesting part. Working in acute um, makes it so special is the, the bond that each of us share. Um, we all have a close-knit bond, um, especially with the ones that I started working out with when I first became a nurse. And the, the teamwork is tremendous. Working on acute care as a new graduate would be a great learning experience. We see a wide variety of patients, uh, surgicals, orthopedics, uh, general medical, heart failure, diabetes. It's a wide variety that gives you uh, a lot to learn from. Your basic nursing skills that you learned in nursing school will be used on acute care uh, with all the different patient population. And to put what you've learned in a skills lab to practice with your patient population. We have a great team of nurses that work um, in home care. Sometimes in home care we get into some situations where um, the level of care is very high at home and there's a lot of resources needed um, and just setting up a total plan to meet the patient's needs, that's where the nurses need some help. Um, they, they can care for the patients extremely well. Nurses who work in home care will tell you um, one of the, the biggest uh, satisfiers about being a home care nurse is the variety of patients that you see. Um, in one day's time, you may visit a person who has a chronic respiratory illness, then a person who is a cardiac patient, then a wound, and then maybe a new ostomy. So um, the skill set is uh, a varied skill set. But that's also the same thing that really entices some nurses because they feel like they are always learning and they're getting to use many, many skills um, and not just in one specialized area. I do pre-op and post-op um, in the surgery department. And um, what makes it special is we get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with our patients when they're awake and. I guess when they're asleep too, but more importantly when they're awake, um, I get to hear their stories, um, who they are. I'm not from this area, so it's really interesting for me to have that one-on-one -on -one time with them. So yeah, I think that's what makes it most special. The thing about surgery, especially at MDH, you know, a lot of our surgeries are outpatient. So we're scheduled 7 to 3.30, so typically we're here early in the morning um, and then we leave by 3.30. So it's nice, eight hour shift, Monday through Friday. We get our holidays off and weekends off usually. I chose surgery because I really liked human anatomy. That was one of my favorite classes. Uh, during nursing school, I got to observe a couple different um, surgical procedures and I just loved it. So in surgery, um, you have to have a lot of teamwork because there's many different areas that are providing care for the same patient. Surgery, you don't learn that in school. Like you, you learn everything on the job. So when you're starting out with nursing, like you're fresh, you don't have, you know, any, like you're just in a sponge ready to absorb. And I think surgery is the perfect place for that. I see you is special because you, the patients are a lot more ill than they would be on acute care, but you also have lower patient load. 
so it allows you to really focus in on each patient's care and be able to really take your time with you know the drips and whatever the treatment plan is. The excitement about coming to work every day is absolutely you don't know what's going to be here when you get here. It takes a special person to be able to jump right in and dive into to ICU from the get-go. I mean, I've seen people do it. I've got I've worked with great nurses that have done it. But in my experience, I enjoyed working in acute care, getting my experience and then cross training as soon as I can. You know, don't be scared to volunteer and say, "I'll do that. Let me cross train." Don't be scared to do that. Just always be willing to experience different things. I think my favorite part about being in staff development is being able to mentor and collaborate with all the staff, um, getting to know all the faces of all the staff and be able to work with them to watch their growth. Um, also knowing how to educate, being able to educate in different ways. You know, people learn differently. Um, some people are going to learn more auditory, some people are going to need to do more of the hands-on tactile skills. Um, so just being able to adapt that orientation um, to be able to provide the education where they're going to get the most out of it. I think the biggest thing is being a resource for our staff throughout the orientation as well as, you know, work still there as a continued resource throughout their whole employment um, to be able to continue their education. OB is the best job I've ever had, probably the toughest job I've ever had just because it can change on a dime. Um, everything can be going fine and then all of a sudden it's not and you have to be prepared for that and you have to be prepared to uh, care for two patients at once, one, th one that you can see and one that you can't see. I've had my babies here, I've had one of my babies in this room um, almost 14 years ago. It's just an incredible amount of teamwork that goes on. It's an incredible amount of trust and, and most of the time it's fun to see a new new person come into the world and you know celebrate with, with those parents. OB is exciting and you never know what can happen and what can walk in the door um, but at the same time you get to really give total holistic care in OB as in you get to really see the emotional side of patients and then you also get to help them physically too so it's just a really good feeling. I look forward to having my babies here someday because I know that my coworkers slash good friends are going to take amazing care of me and I know the providers will completely support me and my baby as well. We hope that uh, future nurses of MDH will choose us and those who are already here will, will want to um, continue on because we have such a strong sense of team. Whether it's the teamwork within a department between shifts or interdepartmentally when they do a handoff um, between one department to another. It's just a very strong sense of team and support for one another and a great respect for everyone's various roles because it takes the whole team for all of us to be successful and for the patient to have a good outcome. Two-in-one removable agitator from Whirlpool gives you two ways to wash. Jeans, in. Sweaters, out. Towels, in. Comforters, out. You decide. Whirlpool. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I met, was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. MTC Communications is building a high-speed fiber network in our community, and we're putting priority on the areas with the greatest interest. That means we need your input to let us know you want us to build fiber in your area first. 
Experience the speed and convenience of fiber internet by visiting our special website and registering. Let us know you want fiber internet today and make your voice heard. There's been a lot of rewarding parts working at McDonough District Hospital. I've had patients come to me that maybe have not had care in the community, care available. So with the addition of nurse practitioners, lately we've been able to add more care and that's very rewarding to me. My hope is that when the patients leave at the end of an appointment, they leave and they definitely feel like they've been listened to and they feel like their needs have been met, their cares have been met, and that they're gonna get the proper treatment that they deserve from me as a provider. I chose MDH. Uh, we moved here and I was researching different places that would allow me to VBAC, um, uh, have a vaginal birth after C-section, and the doctors here do encourage that, and so I, I chose that after looking online. And I wouldn't want to deliver anywhere else because they all go above and beyond, and they're so kind and actually care about you. And welcome back here to TSSR Game Time Live. Presented by MDH as we're getting ready to head into the second half of action. Both teams warming up on the field. Glad you're alongside with us. Got a couple comments in the chat. Blake Driscoll says, really liking the creativity and controls playbook this season. That jump pass for two was sweet. And I like the other one motion plays in last week's game. Go Bombers. Absolutely. Again, Bombers have a, a little bit of a different approach in the playbook this year, but definitely making use of all the athletes that they have on the field. And I'm right there with you. That jump pass was was pretty sweet. And we'll go, give a quick shout-out to some of our fine sponsors here on TSSR Game Time Live. Sports Corner at 124, McCombs Original Local Sports Bar. It's Sports Corner at 124 with a focus on local sports. Catch WIU games and all the area TSSR Game Time Live broadcasts at Sports Corner at 124. All while enjoying your favorite cold drink and some of the best food in West Central Illinois. Stop in and say hi at 124 North Randolph Street in Macomb. Tom Conklin State Farm. Face-to-face -face over the phone, by email, or by text. Choose how you do business with Tom Conklin State Farm Macomb. You can reach them at 309-837-1200 or visit them online at www. MacombSF.com. Better yet, stop in and get your quote today at 1221 West Jackson Street in Macomb. We also want to say a big shout out to Diggers College City Bowl. They got the Rockin' Bowl going tonight, 9.30 to 11.30 p.m. Big $10 special under the lights. The lights are out and they got the lasers going and the smoke machines and the music. Good time up in there at Diggers College City Bowl and, uh, of course, the Wednesday night dollar special, 9 to 11 p.m. Bowling games and shoe rentals are each just a dollar. Late nights at Diggers College City Bowl. Again, one of, another one of our fine sponsors. Of course, we've got the Diggers College City Bowl Red Zone. Come seen that a couple times here tonight. Been very successful. I think that shooting 100% on the red zone opportunities – uh, Macomb, I think we were stopped once. Were we stopped once? Um, or have we scored on every drive? I think I think they've scored on every drive. I don't I don't remember I don't remember them turning the ball over or anything. There's been no interceptions. They had that one close one here at the end of the second quarter in the end zone, but that was converted for a touchdown. Yep, sure was. So the Bomber is up 30-12 to 12 over the Chargers, and once again they will get the kickoff to start the second half, looking to go up even more. Again, both teams huddling, getting ready to get started here for the second half of action. Yeah, Tegan was down here during halftime. I think yeah. he messed with the air conditioner again. He threw it. It, it was down 65 <laughs> earlier. He threw it down to 60, which, by the way, I'm a big fan of it being cold. But uh, a little much, know, I, I don't, don't want to freeze old John out there. He, John doesn't have the uh, the natural uh, weather protection that Tegan and I have. So we got to take care of uh, we got to take care of Skinny John around here. Yep, Tegan was Tegan was telling me all about that natural protection during halftime. <laughs> 
I, uh, I was down here. Uh, I was shivering at one point. It was that bad while he was in here. I guess Jeez. I didn't realize he turned it turned it down even further. Oh, to 60, yeah. So I got it up. We're going to. Thank goodness. We'll, we'll get you thought out here, Johnny. <laughs> now we're getting ready for the Bombers to get the ball back in their hands. And you know what? I was down there. I was checking on my daughter and, and some friends that were out playing at halftime. And, uh, you know, just a, a beautiful Friday night with the kids out having fun. And um, uh, But I didn't get to uh, enlighten Tegan. We talked about it before the game. Uh, he really <laughs> needs to have an appreciation, uh, a little rock history in it appreciation lesson and and uh from the beatles so i had a, a a song called uh dig a pony from the let it be sessions uh all queued up and ready to go and, and let them know where rock music came from riff heavy rock and uh but unfortunately our, our paths uh didn't didn't connect but uh tegan if you're listening uh, does he have cans up there tegan i will uh we will have that lesson you will uh get your your beatles Beatles lesson. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll get it after the game, Moni. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely got to be enlightened a little bit. He was saying some, some wild stuff about his taste in music down here in the booth before pregame. Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> interesting behavior, out of the young man. So getting ready to get things started. Chargers once again will kick off. And again, they've got they've got a tight six to the to the wide side of the field, and then a loose four here. Head of steam, Connor Bishop. Oh, his feet stopped there. But he's still able to get forward for another five yards out across the 30 or right at the 30, it looks like. Nice deep kick there, but Bishop able to pick up the nice return. Brings the ball, like you said, back out to about the 30. So McComb will start the first drive of the second half here. Looking to go up even more on the Chargers. We'll see if they can get it done. Whole house oh, takes the handoff, the run to the right side. That's he makes one man miss. Pull. That's not a designed run. That was a, a GT, so the guard and the tackle pulled to the field, right? And uh, Braden Holdhouse is reading that backside D end. He saw the D end crash down, so he just ripped it right out of Connor's out of Connor's gut. There's no design blocking in front of him. He just reads the, the DN crashing and just runs right off of, of his behind and is able to scamper out for a 12-yard gain. Sports corner first down for the Bombers. High snap there. Whole house comes down with it. Fakes another handoff. Runs up the middle. He's going to split it to the outside. He's got a little bit of room to run here. Pushes it up to about eight-yard gain. That's a broken play. Uh, it wasn't over his head. That snaps at his face. That snap is one that, that we need to control, but it's not exactly where, where you want it. I understand that. But right at about his eyes, which probably messes, you know, when it's coming right at your eyes. But uh, but the ball just kind of jumps in his hands a little bit, which disrupts the timing. He's not able to give it to the carrier. But he just scrambles. And, again, like we mentioned earlier, down in the red zone, bounces off a blocker. Now we've got trips to the, to the near side. Whole house hands this one off to the running back in the backfield. That's Bishop on the carry. He picks up the sports corner first down and a few more. Brings that one out to about the 40-yard line. Nice carry there from the senior Connor Bishop. That was nice timing all the way around. Nice releases from the O-line. They were engaged. Uh, got second-level blocking, and Bishop just took the rock and, and put his head down and charged forward for about, about eight. Yep, I got him down for about eight on that run. So we got twins outside with a wing, which we talked earlier, creates that trip surface. Uh, we've got an R down here in Dion Doyle, the big target, with 10 personnel. This time comes, Holt House, Graham's to his left, looks to run this one up the field once again. He's got a little bit of room to run towards the near sideline, dives forward a little bit, able to pick up, I believe that's going to be another first down. It is, Sports Corner first down on the run for Braden Holt House. Using his legs this drive to start off the second half. Now that one I think was a, a designed quarterback run, but he looked to cut it into the into the into the middle of the line. Just saw a little a little a little bubble and just powered through it. Hit on the Jets and picked up about twelve. And uh, number twenty, uh, Benzinger, with really heady play, tries to chop the ball out at the sidelines. Luckily, they're right at the boundary, but we got to do a little better job of protection there. 
There's the give to Bishop. Gets outside, gets off tackle, gets out to the wide side, chased down from behind, but not until a gain of about four and a half. Run to the outside for the senior, Connor Bishop, once again. He'll pick a, about, like you said, about four and a half, five there. Set up second, and they're going to say six for the Bombers' offense. It was an athletic play by the Charger, and that might have been Benzinger again coming from behind and chasing him down as as uh, Bishop was trying to stretch it out vertically to get around that edge, and he was doing it. He's looking in front of him, but Benzinger is able to chase him down from behind uh, again after a gain of about, about five. Now that's up the middle. Squeaks through. Pushes to about... I think that's about four, so we're about a yard short. Four-yard carry for Bishop and the Diggers College City Bowl red zone as the Bombers now up to about the 15-yard line, about 16, I should say. Be third and one and for this Bombers offense. And this this is what we were talking about before halftime with, with the depth of the roster. It looks like that front five of the defensive unit of, of line I – West might be wearing down just a little bit, and we're starting to get the between the tackles running going. Now that is Lambert out on the outside. He's still charging forward. He gets uh, shaken down at about the five-yard line. That pass goes for about 10, 11. That's just a little leak route from the slot, and that's Lambert. Again, we talked about uh, in, in week one that this is his first year of football, and he's had some big catches already on this young season. I say young. Tonight, John, wraps up the first third of the season. Yep. That's third, third game for both teams here tonight. Second home game for this McComb squad. Of course, it is senior night. Some of the seniors showing out on the McComb side. Whole House will hand this one off to, I believe, Bishop once again. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Not much more after that. No, he got through there. He charged through hard, but but about in that time we weren't able to get second level. We were engaged in those in those uh, line of scrimmage blocks, and the linebackers came down hard. He would have had to have fought through about three about a lineman and two linebackers, and, and ends up getting shaken down at about the line of scrimmage, maybe a half yard. Seven twenty to go here in the third quarter of play. Fake snap. Nobody moving there. Trips wide. Whole house comes back set. Here's the snap. Holt House rolls out to his left. Trying to get to the outside. Can't quite get there. Nice tackle by the Chargers. Didn't quite see who was on the tackle on the stop there, but I think Holt House maybe lost half a yard there. Yeah, the that's carry. a linebacker coming out coming up hard. That's Nick Johnson, of course, is is their dude that's uh made a lot of plays between him and um why am I and Ben Benzinger? Yep, Benzinger. Benzinger. Uh, those two guys have really been the uh, the two dudes for for Illini West, and, and that's old school, just wrapping them up, tackling. They're they're not uh, following the Pete Carroll system with the hawk tackling down low. They're they're coming right at you and and swooping their hands, reaching for their six shots. And this one, uh, a Holdhouse rolls out to the right, and I think they'll get credit with a sack there. Big TFL. And, and uh, was that Johnson again? No, Bensinger. Who else? Bensinger. Yeah. It, well, it's one of the two. It's yeah. one of the two. Yeah, definitely coming up with big plays on both sides of the ball for Johnson and Benzinger. Gets the big TFL there. Sack, whatever you want to call it. So McComb will be pushed back to the 10. It's going to be fourth down. McComb looking to punch one in here. Trying to go up big on the Chargers to start the second half. Fake snap, no movement once again. Comes reset at the line. So we got trips to the field, snaps away. Whole house looks to Looking throw down ahead. the middle. Watson just not able to get up high enough to catch that one. So it'll be a turnover on downs for this Bomber squad. And the Chargers will take over at about the 10-yard line. So that they had the field spread out. Uh, Watson ran into the middle of the field. There was a crowd around him. Um, and... Holdhouse threw the ball where he had to. It was up high. Watson would have had to get up there. But in order to get himself some space, he had to lunge forward a little bit and wasn't able to get vertical. Um, I think that we might have been able, if we could have swept our eyes a little bit, I think we had an opportunity out there on the far, in the towards the corner of the end, near corner of the end zone. Yeah, I noticed that too. I think that was Doyle out there. Didn't look like 
Looks like there's one man covering two guys out there. Whole house not able to quite get it to him. Here's the first play of the second half for the Chargers. It's going to be a run play up the middle. I believe that's going to be number 25, Isaiah Knotts, on the carry. Might have picked up a couple there. I'm going to give him about one and a half. This is big right here. After, for the first time, the bomber train stalled a little bit down there uh, in, in the red zone, in the Diggers College City red zone, and um, can't let the, the Chargers get momentum, get confidence, and start, you know, they're going to have to go almost 90 yards, 89 yards, if they're going to get this into the end zone. That would be huge confidence for the Chargers. So you've got to stop this now and get that football back in the offense's hands. His third quarter flying by, 445 remaining. It'll be Kinnaman drop back to pass. He has to scramble to his left. Nice tackle there by the bomber. He's able to bring him down. Picked up. Right at the 20, so he's still a about half a yard. yard short. Yep, about a half yard, yard short of the first down. On the run from the quarterback, Max Kinneman. So we had a tight end type that was in space, um, just wasn't comfortable with the, with the cushion provided, and it, he pulls it down. Of course, he's getting chased in the backfield, but was able to leak out. We didn't have a, a backside contained set. He's able to scramble for about eight, wasn't it? Yep, third and one for the Chargers. 25, oh, that was up. Handoff goes right down the middle. That was number 20 on the carry, Bentzinger. Once again, able to pick up the first down for this Chargers offense. Pushes that one out to about the 27. It was a gain of, I would say, about five. Three minutes 40 in the third quarter. Line A West coming set to the line here. Double tight bone. They ran that broken wing a couple of times before this. Handoff comes to the outside. Nice tackle there by McComb. Not able to pick up a lot there. I believe that was Johnson on the carry for the Chargers. I can give him about two on the carry for Johnson. Boy, every time they, they give that wing T look. I bet you there are some people on the in the Chargers stands that are get a little nostalgic for that that run of six titles in twelve years, I believe that uh, Jim Unra had. Just a phenomenal era of of high school football here in in Central Illinois, West Central Illinois. So they've got double dubs out. They've got an ace look. They're looking to throw the ball down the field. Watson's there, a little bit overthrown by Kinnaman. It'll be an incompletion. So I'll bring up third down for this Chargers squad. McComb looking to pick up a big stop, third and long. Now they've had the same situation we've looked at. Number one was expressing frustration down here. He seems to think he was all alone out at about the 30, uh, on the three, so probably about the 32. So again, it'll bring up third and seven, 2.30 on the clock. Be a big stop for McComb here if they could get the ball back. Kinnaman drops back to throw once again. Got his eyes down the near sideline towards the middle. Broken up by Watson. Yep, nice play there by Watson, able to force the incompletion. That pass was intended for number 12 on the Chargers' side. Trey Niederman, not able to haul that one in. It'll bring up fourth down and seven. Looks like the Chargers made. Looks like they brought on the punt crew. You saw them fake one in the second quarter. Wasn't able to convert it. They'll be set back to punt once again. Big stop there for the Bombers. They'll punt this one away. Nice punt downfield. Gets up to about the 40. Goes out of bounds at about the 39. And that was from the 30. So a 30-yard punt. Not bad leg there. McComb will take over once again at about the 39. 
Again, your score is 30 to 12 with two minutes 24 to go in the third quarter of action. A lot of people into in the chat watching us, joining us here tonight. Make sure you get into that live chat. Let us know who you're rooting for, where you're watching us from, and all of the other goodies. Look, like it could have been a false start there. Run comes up the middle for Bishop. Gets close to a first down. Picks up about nine on the play. Kind of an awkward tackle there. Bishop kind of went head first. Glad to see he's up and walking. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the same thing. Looked like he was diving forward and, and caught one, but seems like he's okay. He'll come, he'll come off the field now, but maybe a little bit shaken up. Like I said, that definitely a, a rough tackle there. Come, come set once again. Second and one. Trips to the field. Handoff comes. It'll be a close to the first down. I believe it's going to be third and in inches. Nope, they're moving it. Nope, but it will be a sports corner first down. I believe that was number 27 on the carry, Drake May. Able to pick up the sports corner first down for the Bombers. They push right up to the 49, just past the 50. And again, we're in that same look with the, the 10 personnel trips to the field and Dion Doyle here near us. And there's that. That's more of a, of a bubble screen. And that's just Drew Watson going back and forth, just making people miss. Again, like we talked about with, uh, with Nick Johnson earlier today, just a real patient run there. He, he didn't try and burst through anything and get ahead of things. He was patient, waited out. He, he stopped the feet of the linebackers, and he's able to turn about a two-yard gain into an eight-yard gain. Yeah, nice pickup there from Watson. Now this time all they're doing is they're taking that slot and the number three and they're just flipping it here out to the field near us. Deion Doyle's still in the R, but now he's part of the trips and Ian Case is alone in the L on the far side into the boundary. Clock rolls under 30 seconds. Handoff comes to Bishop in the backfield. He's going to be met right at the line of scrimmage. Not a real clean exchange there. Uh, Bishop wasn't able to... to to get that football with his feet moving. He had to stop his feet because the exchange was not exactly clean, and that's the difference in between where he was met. And the clock will roll to zero, and that's how the third quarter of play will come to an end. Quick quarter there, McComb with one drive. Chargers got the turn the ball right back over. And that's how the fourth quarter will start right here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential, with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. Back here for the final quarter of action as Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooley brings you Bombers football. Been a great bounce back game for the Bombers to this point. Of course, looking to hang on to this lead, maybe extend it out if they can. 12 minutes of game time remaining. Bombers. So this is the first time in a while we've seen a two-back look. We're, we're seeing a king formation with a tight end. So we got uh, 21 personnel here. Give to the back is Bishop. He's met at the line, but he's able to, to, to shake back and forth a little bit and pick a couple out of it. And is he at the first down or just short? Looks like they're going to oh, they're moving the chain, so it must have got about three on the play. Sports corner first down for the Bombers and Connor Bishop. 
We got a couple live chats coming in here. Blake Driscoll. Lambert played his freshman year, but not sophomore. Sorry, I'm a few minutes behind on the game. Of course, referring to Mr. Langdon Lambert. Who had a big reception on the far sideline for Macomb near the end zone. And we got Dustin Martin saying, Go Bombers from Morristown, Tennessee. Go Ty Martin, number 76. Glad to have you alongside with us, Dustin. And it's huge to have uh, Ty Martin back after being out week one. And it felt like it could have been. Oh, Brayden Oldhouse makes a man miss down the sideline. Makes another man miss. He's cutting back to the field. And he's pulled down at about the 20. Forward progress might have him just past the 20. Sports corner first down for sure for Braden Holthouse. And we've seen him come out here in the second half of play. Definitely able to use his legs, man. He's got a ton of huge gains for this Bombers side. And, and Coach Coach Horrell, you could just see, he pulled him off to the side and said, you need to go down. Because after he was fighting for those extra yards, you could see him. He was, he was physically manhandled a bit, and you don't want to see that. But anyway... Danny, we were just talking. Uh, it felt like Ty Martin could have been out a little bit longer, which would have been devastating, seeing his progress and his development into the young man he's become, and he's just such a huge anchor on that line. He's may have been playing the best offensive line for the unit, you know, him, him and, and Jeffy Lee and some of these guys, but uh, I've really loved his progress, and he means so much to this football team. We're just glad to have him out there. So the handoff to Bishop will pick up a few for McComb. Give him about three on the play. Ten minutes, 30. McComb once again knocking on the end zone. Trying to go up 36 to 12. Now we're back into that single, single back, uh, 10 personnel with the trips, which has really been the main formation for the Bombers tonight. And now they're burning clock. They're waiting for the arm. They're, uh, they got a three-score lead. They're inside the Diggers College City Bowl red zone with the outlet pass to Ian Casey, who lifts it forward for the Tom Coughlin touchdown. That's just a little hitch right there to the sidelines. And Ian Case just ran forward. There were two chargers in his road, and he just went through them. Just got into the end zone. The big man, Ian Case, puts the gets the touchdown and extends that lead to 24 and the two-point conversion pending, they're going to try and make that a 26-point lead, which would make this now a four-score football game. That's the big man, Ian Case, second touchdown of the game for him. Able to convert one in the first half. McComb sets up for the two-point conversion. Whole house dropped back to pass. Has a man. Got it! Four in the end zone, but the two points will be good. A little bit slow to get up there, Drew Watson. And Thir that's huge right there. That's now a 26-point lead, 38-12. to 12. That makes this a four-score football game. You're going to ask the Chargers offense to be able to put four scores on with some two-point conversions, might I add, um, in order to, uh, to, to take this lead. That's a tall order in, in less than one quarter of football. Yeah, absolutely. Glad. Good to see McComb get into the end zone there. They were stopped on their, their first drive. And, and as we mentioned, I think that was the only drive that they've been stopped on all game to start the second half. But big answer there, able to move the ball up the field, whole house with the legs, Watson with the reception in there, and, of course, Mr. Ian Case punching it in for the touchdown. For all your local news, subscribe to the Community News Brief Weekly Edition, mailed directly to your home every Friday. As an option, you can also receive Monday and Wednesday editions by email. All of this for only $42 per year or $38 per year if you're 65 or older. Single copies can be purchased at select locations in Bushnell, Colchester, and Blandonsville. At Western Illinois University... Leathernecks don't just blend in because purple stands out. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a leatherneck and get an education that stands out. Kick here for Macomb goes down the far sideline. Goes, sneaks out of bounds, so that's going to be a penalty, and they're going to bring that up. But, boy, that was, you know, we've talked about this a couple of times, but that was nearly a perfect kick. Uh, it really ran down that sideline. And um, really had a chance to bounce back in and maybe even bounce all the way into the end zone. But uh, 
snuck out of bounds there at, at around the 10 or 8-yard line. But uh, either way, they're going to bring that out to the 35. Yep, Illini West will start this drive at the 35. If they're going to go, they need to start here. Just under 10 minutes to remaining in this contest. Again, Chargers down, but not quite out. Still a lot of time on the clock. McComb will look to put up another stop here. Pitch comes to the outside for... Nice job right there of setting the edge. Let's see him getting up. That's the senior, Connor Bishop. Just stepped out there, wide side of the field, sat in his spot, made the running back start to turn up, but he squeezed the space down just enough so that he's able to lunge forward and, and wrap up those legs. Looked like a freestyle wrestler trying to leg race, leg lace right there for, for some exposure points. I know seven of you out there listening know what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> We got the world championships coming up here pretty soon, Johnny. Huge, huge world championships for a strong United States team. Oh, in outside. the backfield right there. Is that the senior again, Connor Bishop? Couldn't tell if that was Bishop or Watson. No, that's Bishop. Watson. Nope, yep, that's that is Bishop on the tackle. Big tackle for loss right there. Loss of about four on the play. I'd call that run was to Johnson. Now, again, as we talked about earlier, that, that this takes Illini West out of their comfort zone. That's third and 15 now. They're well behind the sticks. So now they're going 10 personnel trips to the field, and they're going to roll this out and try and throw it. No, he's straight back, and he goes ahead and throws like a jailbait break screen, and it is wrapped up immediately. Lucas Finch on the reception for the Chargers, but as you mentioned, not able to pick up much there. Got, Got a bomber it. down on the field. Looks like cramps. Yep, looks like cramps there. So it'll bring up fourth down and 12 for the Chargers. Tony, is this four down territory as we're getting closer to late in the game? Well, it, it, you're, we're going to learn a lot about the coaching staff's mentality about where this football game is. Uh, where are we? We're at, you know, just under a, nine just, minutes. Yep, just over eight minutes. Just over eight minutes. So just about eight minutes left in the football game. You're down four scores. Um, this might be punt this ball away and, uh, you know, try and try and get out of this one healthy and 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 maintain some uh, maintain your roster heading into a week four matchup. Good Hope Garden is located at 445 East Main Street. Good Hope. Open April through October, Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, and Saturday, 10 to 4. For all your fresh produce needs, be sure to follow their Facebook page for daily updates. Grover and Mary Jo DeCounter and family invite you to Good Hope Gardens. Come see where it's grown. King Family Chiropractic, with locations in Bushnell and Macomb, supports all area student athletics. They offer office hours in Macomb Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Bushnell Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. To set up an appointment, call 309-837-6932. They can also perform dot slash CDL physicals for just $85. So that's the senior Connor Bishop that's cramping up there in the right leg. He's had a huge game defensively, plus he's scampered the ball uh, quite a bit here and, and even put his head down between the tackles for some big runs. So uh, this might be a situation where they get him out of the game and get ready for next week. Oh, uh, that's – I think we're over the line on that far side. The freshman got a little eager. Yep. Penalty marker has come out. Laundry on the field. <laughs> see which way that goes. It'll be charged against – Oh, it wasn't a freshman. That's uh, Big E in case. Got a little hungry for the football, trying to go in there and get his paws on one. Five yards, though, that's still going to be fourth and seven. I think they're still still putting this ball away. Really clean game played by, by McComb. I, I believe that's only their, their second penalty, excluding the, the kickoffs out of bounds. Sure. Yeah, they had the face mask really early. And then, no, and, and really both sides, a uh, couple of false starts, which you can't fault anybody. McComb does that to a lot of people. Here's, it looks like they're going to set up and yeah, get, get ready to up. go for they're this. Going for this. Oh, he's moving. They didn't nope, go, nope. but then it was a, a little – yeah, they just tried to buy yards there. So they tried to bring the return man up to a safety position and get it over his head and get the ball rolling. They, they just wanted to uh, 
eliminate the return, which they did effectively, but the ball checked up, so they get it at the 30 instead of letting it roll to inside the 20. Believe the clock says 739. Bombers will take over on the minus 30. Again, be content here just to chew up as much clock as you can, sitting on this big 24 or excuse me, 26 point lead. Expect the pace to slow down. Absolutely. This is going to be a wait for the right arm territory. Handoff comes into the backfield. Run up the middle, swallowed up by a couple chargers there on the stop. It's number 27 for McComb. That's Drake May on the carry. Picked up a, about a yard on the play. May second carry of this contest. Clock continues to roll, of course. Damone Johnson, the seniors out there in the slot on the far side. That's great to see. Waiting for the play clock to come down here, this whole house. Snap comes, handoff once again for May in the backfield. Picks up another about two yards on the carry once again. Yeah, there was a great big hole there, but then Sean Watkins, 5'10", uh, 200-pound linebacker, closed up that hole and, and narrowed in on the freshman. Uh, Sean Watkins, a wrestler for Illini West, a talented young man. Um, you know, those wrestlers are going to come in. They're going to wrap up. They're going to make football plays, John. That's what wrestlers do. Absolutely. It'll set up McComb at about three and six to go to the first down. Whole house talking to his man in the backfield there. Play clock ticks down. Keeps it. Whole house on the keeper. Comes to the near sideline. He's going to pick the up the first down and gets out of bounds. Be a gain of, I would call it about seven. You don't like, you don't love getting out of bounds because it stops the clock, but at the same time, you get your quarterback out of bounds and and uh, eliminate a little wear and tear on them there. But but that's a huge first down because now that's four more plays that, that we're going to chew clock up and, and whittle that clock down. We're now under six minutes, you know, and it, with a four-score lead. That's seemingly insurmountable at this point. Deion Doyle now comes out of the game. Oh, somebody's got to – there we go. Oh, back more, more, more. Oh, we got to – there we go. <laughs> Creeped about – Three yards offside there. He able needs to, to be on the ball. There we go. Snap comes. Handoff to May. He comes around the right side. He's got a little bit of room here oh. towards the fire sideline. Nice tackle there. I didn't get that number. It's 13 or 15. 13 or 15 for sure. I think I think it was 15. 16? Could that be 6? Either way, great tackle 15. there. 15. What do we got there? That's uh, oh, that's Jorge Espinoza. We've talked about him a bit. Mr. Espinoza on the tackle may be able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Had a little bit of room to run there, but great tackle on that that far sideline by Espinoza. Able to slow him down. Clock continues to roll here in Macomb. 4:30 to go in the fourth quarter. Whole house fakes the handoff once again, and I think that was a high snap. Disrupted the timing of the exchange, and Whole House just wisely kept it instead of trying to to push the ball to to Drake May, and that way we don't we don't have a uh, chance of a fumble. Whole House will lose about two on the play there. Third and twelve for the Bombers. Again, con clock continuing to roll here, and Bombers are going to be content with that. Whole House gets a snap, handoff into the backfield. Big hole, nice big run burst. there. Yeah, I was just about to comment. We're, we're now behind the sticks, which is one of the only times that we've been in this game, but, but a huge burst up the middle by the freshman Drake May. 
is going to, for about 10 yards, is going to put us at about, oh, maybe even 11 yards. Looks like it's going to be fourth and two in plus territory now. Do we punt this ball away or do we try and pick up this first down? And, yep, looks like we're going to try and pick up this first down and keep this clock moving. So after the run from May that picked up about 10, Bombers will be faced with a fourth and two. Clock now just hit three minutes. Fake snap there. A couple men jumped off sides on the Chargers' side. No, that's on us. Looks like there was some movement by McComb. Oh, no. <laughs> yep. So that's the second time tonight. They pointed, they pointed the wrong they way. They pointed south, and the ball headed north. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that. Makes our job just ever, ever so slightly more difficult. Yep. So we're in the two-minute range here. Two, just under three, it looks like two forty-five-ish, and uh, just doing all they can to try and keep that clock winding down. And after the penalty, it will be McComb first. Down. What are we? So this is a wide, wide bone. Almost a punt formation. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I thought. I, I kind of second guessed myself on the first down. They're going to take a knee here. So House at will, forty minutes or forty seconds a clip. Where are they at? They're at two ten. You can do that three more times. So, yeah, it'll be just about right. And, you know, if nothing else, they give the ball back to Alina West with just a few seconds. Yeah, it, interesting kneel formation there. Maybe they're no, trying yeah, to give the, the, the punter a little bit of room to work here. No, I think uh, it, it is a true kneel down situation. They're going to try and get this clock down to next to nothing. And, and what that is, is is Drew Watson's a safety back there in case there's a bad snap. Um, but uh, But when I first saw it, I just didn't understand um, just because of the clock situation. I didn't think that we were at that point yet, but I think, again, they're going to get it as close to zeros as possible. Um, 40 seconds a clip. We're now in the one. Oh, yeah, we're down under 120. Um, so you'll get it down now to about 140-ish. I'm sorry, 40 seconds. And then uh, on the punt – and you know what? If you get it down to, to three, four seconds on that fourth down, you just kind of give it to them and let the, the quarterback move a little bit for those three, four seconds and call it a day. So there it is again. We're now, yeah, that's at 45 seconds. So they won't be able to get it down to zero, but if they get it down close, then uh, maybe move a little bit to get it to zero. Fourth down here, whole house looking towards the sideline. Couple coaches. They said just let it go. Yep. Couple coaches here putting their hands up. The proverbial stop sign. So, so it's more than I thought that well he's got his hand up, so now we're under ten. So he starts going one, two and that's going to get it down to two seconds. Oh, they're going to let it go. So I th Oh, they threw the flag. But I think they're going to pick that flag up and say, let's go home. Yep, yep. looks like that's exactly what they're doing. So that's so what how happened was they, were, they had talked to the official. That play probably took 42, 43 seconds. And that was just kind of worked out that that, that was going to be a 43-second play clock on that particular <laughs> play. So a huge win for Tanner Horrell and this Bombers crew tonight at the hangar here in the danger zone. Uh, really controlling the Diggers College City Bull red zone. Um, lighting up the scoreboard with the Tom Coughlin touchdowns. But, you know, obviously once again, Braden Holdhouse putting the team on his back. He's a leader, dynamic young man. He's throwing the ball accurately, pushing downfield, hitting the now routes, hitting the, uh, the underneath stuff. Uh, so a little bit of finesse and feel there. Um, also 
maybe creating a couple extra moments with his legs, but which opens things up for a Connor Bishop to go between the tackles um, and, and put his head down and get yards. Um, also, uh, uh, we had uh, Drake May, of course, the freshman coming in and getting some, some big, tough yards. Uh, Ian Case, huge night. A um, couple touchdowns, didn't he? Yep, two touchdowns on the game and three attempts for Mr. Case. He had 23 yards to go along with those two scores. That's our Chris Carter. All he does is catch touchdowns. That's you all. See, he, that's all he needed to say, do. You and say it, that like it's a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, when you get that that big frame up in the end zone in that red zone, I mean, he is just a huge target for Watson. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, they've got the twin towers there. Dion Doyle, same thing. Dion had some really nice catches tonight. Uh, I know he had a two-point conversion. Did he get into the end zone himself? Yes, he did. Yep, touchdown yep. for Dion Doyle. touchdown for Doyle. So, so, you know, a couple of guys going 6-5, and, and Case is, is what? He's massive. 6-7 uh, is what six, they have seven. him listed at. 6-7, so 6 6-7 six, out on the outsides. There's not a lot of teams that, that can match up there. Um, Connor Bishop, massive game from the outside linebacker spot um, in big moments. Um, th there was a little bend to the Bombers' defense in the first half, but you know, as we talked about, that depth the roster came into play and uh, uh, really wore down the Chargers to where that uh, it took a little bit of the bite out of that uh, downhill running game. And once that was gone, um, it, it, it's matching up. You know, when they want to spread things out, when they want to hit the counters, when Mister X in the in the passing game, then you wanting to match up your skill guys with ours, and and the Bombers feel good about you know, matching their skill guys up with, with most teams that they're going to see. So once again, final score, 38-12 to as the Bombers move up to 2-1 and one on the season. Chargers fall to 1-2. and two. Again, just a, a great bounce back week after the tough loss to Knoxville. Able to pick up the win against this pretty talented Chargers squad. We'll take a quick break here on TSSR Game Time Live and We'll see if one Mr. Coach Horror will come up here for a quick post-game interview, and we'll get things wrapped up here on Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling's presentation of Bomber Football. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there's limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. MDH Sport Medicine Rehab is just not for the athlete. Um, we see a variety of ages, getting them from having pain to no pain to get back to their normal activities and their prior level of function. Back up here in the booth, we have Coach Horrell for a little post-game interview. I'll hand the headset off to him and get a little post-game thoughts. Coach, just an absolutely great game. Uh, you know, full four-quarter game by the, the Bombers tonight. It was a, a bit of a slugfest, trading punches early. Um, and, and again, we were in that situation. We mentioned it here. It's about eight minutes to go in the first half. You're up two. You've got the ball. You're wanting to chew up that, that clock. Didn't work out that way. You got <laughs> down the field in a hurry and, and gave you the opportunity to go up to, to end up punching the ball in again. But those defensive stops there, when it had been traded back and forth, really set the tone for the rest of the night. Yeah, I mean, uh, we didn't start how we wanted to on D, um, but I thought we battled really well. It was, I mean, they scored the first two drives and they didn't really get anything after that. Um, they might have gained some yards, but we're making it difficult. You know, if we make them snap the ball over and over and over again, uh, we feel like good things are going to happen. Um, so I felt like we did a much better job. And uh, first quarter, first two drives, we were tackling a little too high and uh, started to figure that out a little bit. So um, hopefully we can build on that. Yeah, it was interesting to see in that first quarter kind of a not your father's Illini West offense, uh, spreading things out a little bit. Uh, running a little bit of PA, a little bit of action, uh, getting the ball downfield, and then we didn't see it again. So um, there were some things that, that looked good. I thought we were going to see some, some wrinkles tonight, but, you know, at, at a certain point in that first half, they had Benzinger and Johnson just coming downhill. So, you know, they were sticking with what worked, but eventually, and we talked about depth of roster. 
We felt like you guys turning over that defensive line really paid dividends. Your linebackers started kind of getting into the flow. I really like the outside edge set tonight. I think Connor Bishop had a massive game from his outside linebacker position. And, uh, and, and I agree with you, a really nice defensive night after those first couple drives. Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, we kind of expected them to be a lot of bone and a lot of wing um, just because what happened to us last week. Um, but we moved, we moved some guys around. We got Bishop back to his uh, natural position, kind of that outside backer. He does a really good job setting the edge. He did that well last year. Um, we tried to move him inside, but, uh, you know, we're kind of, kind of moving him around, but he's better outside. So you saw that tonight. He was kind of taking away that edge. And um, I thought our backers got better through the game. And, uh, yeah, D-line played pretty well. Absolutely. And, of course, you know, moving to the offensive side of the ball, your quarterback is the story three weeks in a row dynamic athlete, um, broken plays when, when the snap isn't exactly right. And, and sometimes I feel like the snaps at the eyes, which which is handleable, but maybe there's just a slight bounce and disrupts the timing. But he's able to just say, well, I guess I'm just going to take it on my own and, and go with it. But uh, so his, his creativity, his ability to keep his balance, keep a play alive, and then you pair that with the fact that you've got 6'5 and 6'7 out on the edges – I can't think of a team that that's not going to create matchup nightmares for. Yeah, you know, uh, Braden's kind of the, the guy we've been wanting at quarterback since, uh, I mean, for yeah, years now. You, right? I, yeah, you know, yeah, that's, yeah. that's kind of the guy that, that we envisioned when we started this thing. Yep. Um, so it's nice to kind of see that come to fruition. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I feel like we got some good matchups everywhere. I mean, we got Dion on the outside with Omar Speed. Ian's tough when he gets the ball to tackle at 6'7", 225. And, and Drew, they really took him away tonight. I thought they did a good job of double teaming him maybe a little bit. Mm. Um, but And Jack Beal. Jack Beal had some nice catches tonight. I thought he was going to pull on that one um, down there in the first quarter. But I think yeah, we got contributions tough. from everybody, so that's that's really exciting. Well, it's been really fun to see a junior Langdon Lambert. It seems like every week when, when you need a third down conversion, all of a sudden this guy comes up, his first year back in football, yeah, and uh, and he's made huge plays. We're not talking getting in at the end of the game. We're talking when you need a pickup, all of a sudden Langdon Lambert out of nowhere. You know, you got these names that you hear every week, yeah. and this guy's like, well, don't forget me because I'm just Mr. When You Need Me. No, yeah, we're super excited to get him and uh, – Huge third down conversion there in the third quarter. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't get to punch it in, but but we kind of set that that play up um, throughout the game with our just our downhill run game, and uh, we saw that they were really really coming downhill, and we thought we'd get them in space, um, and he did, and he got downhill. I thought I was hoping he'd punch it in there, but tackled a little short. One thing I've noticed uh, the last two weeks is you've really gotten into a rhythm where it's sort of a, a simplicity of, of formation where you're, you're just going trips one way or the other. You're moving the, the slot and the three, just bouncing from side to side. And then out of nowhere tonight, I saw that old school king. Yeah. And, uh, and I just love that, that, that change up, that look for it. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we saw some things we liked on film. And uh, we thought we could take advantage of some things. And, and we did and we didn't. You know, I think we still need to clean some th things up. Um, I thought we should have been able to get the edge a little bit better. And, I mean, Braden got there, but uh, not as clean as I would have liked. Coach Horl, I, I would be – I can't let you out of this booth without talking about how I lost my mind. I was so happy. I about jumped out the window. John can attest to this. I saw Joe Molden in the polo and the tight shorts, 1980s football with that play action pop pass to the tight end for the yeah. touchdown to the big man. That's so old school. <laughs> I, that, I don't expect that of you. You and I have talked about that for years, and, and that wasn't – there was no new wrinkle to it. That was just – 80s football tight end pop pass. I loved every second of it. Yeah, we ran that in camp a bunch at Western, and I think we completed about 95% of them for touchdowns. Yeah, you got the so, guys to do it. Yeah, so we're glad to see it work out. Um, and then yeah. on this end, it looked like uh, Braden was shooting a free throw, and, and uh, Ian went up and grabbed the board. Yeah, we call that one shooter, so it makes sense. That's the second time I talk basketball, and it may not be the rest <laughs> of the season. So, hey, world championships are coming up. But, hey, you got to get next door. But uh, thanks for talking to us. Huge win, 2-1, and one, moving it up, up to Warsaw on a Saturday next week uh, with uh, some officials issues. Let's remember, and there will be some social media posts, that that's a Saturday football yep. game next week. But uh, huge win. Congratulations. Let's keep the bomber train going. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Yep. So, John Burton, back under the headset here. Great post-game thoughts, courtesy of Coach Horrell. Uh, we can go through a couple couple stats here, and I, I, am, I would be remiss if I were to say that these should be uh, extremely unofficial, I would say. Yeah, but you know what? I, gotta, I, gotta, I really appreciate you taking the reins on that. Uh, 
you know, I did that last week and it's just so, uh, you know, you almost need a third guy in here doing that because, you know, you're kind of trying to keep track of action on the field. I, I really, uh, appreciate the talent of people that can do that seamlessly, but yeah, I was, uh, losing my mind a little bit and you saw that and you're like, Hey coach, how about I go ahead and take that from you and, <laughs> and we'll go ahead and slap some of those. But I tell you right now, we've got, uh, Augie and Tate Horrell. We've got Baylor. Oh, Augie Tate's down. Oh, or not Augie and Tate. Augie's down at about midfield, about the 45. We got uh, J- Jackson Horrell out there and Theo. We got the whole Horrell crew playing a second game tonight. Up oh, number one's up on his feet. Sorry, a little play-by-play of the Horrell, Horrell grandkids and and sons and nephews out there of Coach Horrell. Just, just look at this. That's the future of Bombers out there running around. That's great. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, Take absolutely it. no. Keep going. I wish we had the camera on this. this is, we, and we got someone over here doing jumping jacks. Maybe. Yep. A, I don't know what's going on. So anyway, let's get through a couple of these stats here. We'll start with the Illini West Chargers. Number eight, Nick Johnson had about seven seven carries on the game, 28 yards for him. He had a that first touchdown for the Chargers. Number 20, Mr. Ian Bensinger was saying his name a lot all night. 13 touchdown, carries. Augie! There we go. That's how you do it right there. 50 yards for Mr. Benzinger. Number three, that's the quarterback, Max Kinneman. He gave, picked up about 10 using the legs here tonight. And to round out the rushing, Isaiah Knotts, number 25, had six for the Chargers. And the passing department is Kinneman didn't throw the ball a whole lot. I have him down for five pass attempts. He was able to pick up 52 yards in the air. Of course, had the big play of the big first play of the game going yeah. Outside to one, Mr. Nick Johnson for 38. And that was Johnson's only pass reception that we have marked down. And number 20, Ian Bensinger caught a pass as well for eight yards. And that wraps up the Chargers stats. We'll head over to the McComb side. Number eight, Connor Bishop rushing. Rushed for about 33 yards. Felt like he had a lot more there tonight. But again, it definitely made a big impact on the defensive end of the ball. Number 11, Brady Holthouse, that's the quarterback. He was able to get 65 using the legs here tonight. 27, Drake May came in towards the end of the game. The freshman picked up 14 yards. Holthouse threw for approximately about 193 yards on the night. couple touchdowns there. Receiving Mr. Dion Doyle had 112 yards, had the big play for 53 for the McCombs side and a touchdown. Number one, Drew Watson, 71. Uh, Coach Horrell talked about how they were kind of able to shut him down, but 71 yards receiving, definitely not bad on the night for Mr. Watson. And then, of course, Mr. Ian Case, three three um, passes thrown his way, was able to reel in two of them for a touchdown and 23 yards. Yeah, you talked about uh, Bishop there. You know, you look at that yardage total, and it's not eye-popping, but at the same time, that's, uh, that's the same thing as a uh, – as a boxer out there throwing that jab, you know, 35, 40, 50 times in a fight before it, before he throws that haymaker, you know, with uh, the makeup of the Bombers roster this year, there's really no true fullback. So Connor Bishop, it says 147 pounds at 135, 140 pounds, in, in my opinion. Uh, he's really taking the brunt of that between the tackles running and, and those two three-yard runs that he's getting with his head down are really helping out keeping those defenses honest, keeping those linebackers inside and allowing Braden Holdhouse to bump outside, allowing those hitches, allowing those bubbles and those now routes on the outside. So, so he's really doing a huge job that may not pop off of the stat page, but he's really doing a fantastic job of keeping defenses honest. Of course, tr- trying to pick up the slack from losing Jerome Petty last week. Of course, on one of his first carries of the game, it didn't really – don't feel like we called Connor Bishop's name a whole lot there at the Knoxville game, but definitely here tonight, again, on both sides of the ball. He had 11 carries for this Bombers squad. So, Tony, got any final thoughts to wrap things up here, or should we head get on the road? Yeah, no, I, I just think this is a really good full team performance. I don't, I don't think that there was any – while there was standout performances, obviously, Ian Case, Connor Bishop, Braden Holdhouse, I think that the entire team – and, you know, we can't really get out of here without saying – that line just kept punching, you know, looked a little little wobbly early on, but they just kept punching and they controlled the second half. Absolutely controlled the second half as we got that four score win. But um, total team win, great night. It's going to be a great week of practice heading into that Saturday game in, uh, in Warsaw. 
next week. Yeah, absolutely. So once again, it was the Bombers picking up the win, 38-12. to They pushed their record to 2-1, and one, and we'll be back. I believe it'll be Mr. Luke Little on the call uh, for the West Hancock game next week. He does a lot of the West Hancock games, does a great job. So we hope to have you tune in for that one. So for one, Mr. John Burton, Mr. Tony Weston, and of course, taking Perry around the camera here tonight. This has been TSSR Game Time Lives. And we'll see you at Diggers College City Bowl, Rockin' Bowl tonight. And if you're not there, you better be at the sports corner. There it is. Once again, TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. Have a great night, everybody. Stay safe, and we'll see you next weekend.